I lost myself a little bit. And I think I was trying to kind of flow into the ravine where everybody else was going, like, you know, graduate from university, get a good job, you know, get settled in life. And I was following that path. But so I was in the corporate world. I was in the corporate world for for some time. And uh, I found that, you know, I had a great job, was making great money and I was very comfortable in my life, but I wasn't happy. And I felt like this part of me, music was dying and it was slowly killing me. And I don't know if you've ever had this feeling like you wake up and like, I don't want to say it's a panic attack because I don't want to alarm people. But it just felt like this dread of times passing by. I am nowhere near where I want to be. And why have I just kind of put this innate joy that I had kind of on the back burner? I mean, it was still there. I was still doing shows, not as much as I I wanted to. And I wasn't really putting myself out there. And I think every day when you wake up and you start feeling that dread, it starts to consume you. And it was consuming me. And so a few years ago, I made the decision to just walk away like wholeheartedly. And that was actually right before I wrote my second album. So while I was working, I was discovered on city TV. You know, that was a fluke. A friend of mine uploaded, started a YouTube channel for me. This is when YouTube wasn't like super popular. I want to say like 2000, this is going back to 2010. It was kind of like still new, but not really. And so she started a channel for me. She uploaded a video that she took of me performing at the CNE. And uh, I was a little bit embarrassed, but she did it anyway. And then the next thing you know, I got an email from the producer saying, hey, can you come and sing live on our show? And I'm like, yeah, sure. No worries. Meanwhile, I hang up the phone and I'm like, what the heck just happened here? (laughs) So they're like, yeah, come to the studio five in the morning. We'll do sound check and then blah, blah, blah. So I get there and I'm like, wow. And remember, like, I've got a corporate job to go to, like, later that day. So, you know, I did my thing. And it was funny. I was doing sound check. And after my sound check, the host, one of the hosts come by and he's like, I thought they were playing a CD. I didn't know that was live. So I needed to come meet you. And what was supposed to be, like, a 10-minute segment turned into, like, much longer. And they were just super, super nice. And then... The next thing I know, I went back, I went to work and like everybody at the office apparently saw, and I was yeah. mildly embarrassed because <laughs> cause I still wasn't fully out there. And then people started reaching out to the TV studio. I didn't have a Twitter or a Facebook, a website, like this is 2010. It was still very, very new. So I had very great people behind me that kind of put something together and kind of went from there. I did my first album, was featured on CBC radio right away, lots of different main mainstream radio markets. And then by the time I started to figure out what I was going to do for my second album, that's when the dread was like taking over and the dread was intense. It was like, how long are you going to do this for? I was burning the candle at both ends. I wasn't giving my 100% to either, to either career. Like I was kind of, I felt like I was flailing in one and flailing in the other. And I just wasn't able to find myself. And so I think I was thinking I need to make a really tough decision. And I started thinking about, well, do I want to be like 65 sitting in a cubicle wondering and waiting 